Good evening. evening. Welcome to worship on this Monday, Thursday. I have to practice that because it isn't Monday, Thursday, right? It's Monday, Thursday. It's taken from a Latin word. Did you know you were going to learn Latin tonight? Meaning uh, mandate. This is the night that Jesus gives us a new command. And it was on the night that his best friends betrayed him. We typically only talk about the one. We typically only talk about Judas. But in reality, all 12 let him down. So tonight uh, is celebrated during every Holy Week, but for us at Gethsemane, it's especially exciting as we have seven Uh, students who will be welcomed to the Lord's table for the first time tonight. And there will be an opportunity during our worship service to give them your blessing as a congregation and as their church family. Our worship begins with the order of confession and forgiveness. Please stand as you are able. Friends in Christ, In this Lenten season, we have learned our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and loving each other. This is the struggle to which we are called in our baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this night... Let us confess our sin before God and our neighbor and enter into the celebration of the great three days at peace with God and with one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sin. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Jesus Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join in singing hymn number 522.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Creator God, you prepare a new way in the wilderness, and your grace waters our desert. Open our hearts to be transformed by the new thing you are doing, that our lives may proclaim the extravagance of your love given to all through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. I would invite the children to come forward while uh, we sing Jesus Loves Me. And if you think you're a child, then you can come forward. Clearly, no one thinks they're a child. Oh, well done. (laughs) Mark, we so know you. Oh, here comes Nance. Come on. It's okay. We're not laughing at you, honey. I promise. Well done. My buddy. (laughs) Right? Excellent. Oh, yeah. We got our Crocs on. Okay, so here's my question. What does it mean to, a big word, Betray. Does anybody know what that means? Betray? We're thinking. I can see the squiggle right here. Oh, are you waving? Do you see your mama? Oh, that's very exciting. Do you know what it means to betray? (laughs) Yeah, Jazzy, I'm looking at you. Like, you're asking me? Lance? I'm trying to think of the correct words. You know what? Incorrect words are just fine. Okay, so betraying is basically doing something wrong to someone who trusted you. Oh. See, you got the most important word in there, Lance, is doing something wrong to someone who trusted you. Exactly. There you go. So Jesus is at this meal, and he's got his 12 closest friends around, and he knows Something's about to go down, and he, do you think your best friends are going to be there with you when things get bad? Yeah? You think so? Yeah? Do you want your friends to be there with you when things go wrong? Yeah? Jesus is going to have all of his friends leave him all alone. Bye. Yeah, she's having fun. It's all good. Jesus is going to have his best friends leave him all alone. Who knows what that feels like when your friends leave you? What's her name? Hey, Lily. Lily. Mm Mm-hmm. You want to sit down with me? (laughs) Evidently not. There we go. So now I'm going to ask again. Tell me what it feels like when your best friends, the people you trust the most, aren't there for you when you need them. What does that feel like? Sad. Sad. And depressing. depressing. So we're going to talk about this tonight. And when Jesus is getting ready to do that meal, remember we watched the movie about the Passover meal, First Communion students? And um, he knows that they are all going to do that. He knows that. And even knowing that, he still loves them. That's amazing. Let's say a prayer. I'm going to say some words and you can say it with me. Dear Jesus, help us to love others, even those who betray us. Amen. You can go back to your seats while the rest of us hear God's word. reading for tonight is from Exodus. It talks about the first Passover. 
And First Communion students, I might actually like stop in the middle of the reading and ask you a question about it. <sighs> How many of you who were confirmed long ago when the pastor tested you are having a nervous anxiety attack right about now? Don't worry, you can't fail. This is from Exodus, the 12th chapter, beginning at verse 1. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. Your lamb shall, not be, without, shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall swaddle, slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire. You shall not let any of it remain until the morning. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in a hurry, for it is the Passover of the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Okay, students, what's the Passover? Why did they put blood on the side and the top? Go, Ms. Bernison. So the firstborn son wouldn't die. So the angel of death would pass over, get it, their household. So they used a lamb. Now, who is sometimes called the lamb of God? Students, do you remember? It's one of those answers that if you give it in church, you're probably right. Yes, who said that? Lance, you can shout louder. Jesus, exactly right. So Jesus is like our Passover lamb. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. Good job, by the way. Talking in church is never easy for Lutherans. Starting at verse 23, Paul is writing, For I received from the Lord what I handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Word of God, word of life. Please stand as you are able, as we hear from the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 13th chapter. The reading begins at verse 1. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. 
And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that he was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus said, you do not know now what I'm doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, no, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon said to him, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said, one who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but it is entirely clean, and you are clean, though not all of you. For Jesus knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all are clean. After he had washed their feet, he put back on his robe and returned to the table. He said to them, do you know what it is I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and that's true. That's who I am. So if your Lord and teacher has washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set an example for you that you should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their masters, nor are the messengers greater than the ones who sent them. If you know these things... You're blessed. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little while longer. You will look for me, and as I have said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. But I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. You You may be seated. So the gospel reading gives us a pretty familiar scene. Even if you've never heard the story before, you've probably heard about Jesus washing the feet of the disciples. You've probably heard about this Last Supper. All four of the gospel stories tell us about Jesus celebrating the Passover meal with his disciples, but Matthew, Mark, and Luke They give us the details of the meal itself, how the disciples find the place, how they prepare for the meal, at what point Jesus actually breaks the bread, but not John. While Matthew, Mark, and Luke tell us the exterior of the story, what happens in that upper room, John gives us a glimpse of what's happening inside Jesus. In this text, we see what Jesus is thinking and what he is feeling. First, Jesus knows that his hour has come. He knows that by the next sundown, by tomorrow, he'll be dead. Imagine knowing that. But there's more. He knows how all of those people closest to him will respond. If you saw how the gospel text was printed up on the screen, you saw that I skipped over a bunch of verses, right? We could have read all of chapter 13, and you all would have been asleep. (laughs) It's a long chapter. But what I skipped over is Jesus telling Peter, you're going to betray me tonight, Peter, three times. Peter's like, nah, never going to happen. Yeah, it did. Jesus is going to tell all of them, none of you will remain with me. But they didn't believe him. 
the end of the story tells us he was right. And he even knew who it was that had sold him for 30 pieces of silver to the ones who would kill him. John, the writer of this gospel, and Peter kind of talk in, the, in chapter 13. They're like whispering to each other, find out who it is. Right? Can't you see that? So Peter's the one that goes, <clears throat> who is it, Lord? And Jesus says, the one who's going to dip his bread in the bowl with me. And just as that happens, Judas does. But there's even more. That in the face of all of this, Jesus tells us that he loves them to the end. Having known all this, it says at the beginning of John 13, he loved them to the end. Love. Radical love. It doesn't say he loved some of them. You know, he loved the ones that hung with him the longest. Okay, they're all going to betray, but those two, they're going to stick around the longest. They're the ones I really love. He loved them all. No exceptions. Jesus knew what was about to take place, and he washed their feet. He washed the feet of the one who already had 30 pieces of silver in his pocket. He washed the feet of the one who would deny him three times. He washed the feet of all of those who had begun to doubt what an amazing, tangible proclamation of how big God's love really is. So I'm just going to ask you to take a minute. Don't say it out loud, but think about who it is that's on your list, right? We all got a list. You know that list that is. The list like I would never wash their... F well... <laughs> Granted, I might ever wash anybody's feet. I just got a thing. I'm just saying. <laughs> but there are certain people, ugh, seriously, I got to wash their feet? Who is that for you? It might be somebody you know. It might be, you know, a national figure that you've never met, but you just, ugh, seriously. You hear the name and you just kind of, ugh. You know what I mean. What if Jesus called you to love that person? Here's the thing, church. He is. As Jesus bent down and took that humble position of a slave to wash the feet of those who loved him imperfectly but loved him, he knew that he would soon lay down his entire life for these same fickle friends. This tangible feeling of love first demonstrated in the washing of feet and ultimately demonstrated on the cross. God's love poured out through Christ on everyone, those we like and those we don't. No exceptions. Zero. The meal that those disciples were about to eat in our story takes God's love to an entirely different place. But first, let's figure out what's going on here. For over a thousand years, the Jewish people have remembered God's saving act through this meal, when God delivered the people out of slavery from Egypt, and he instructed them, as we heard, how to slaughter the lamb, how to eat it. And, you know, we don't know, loins girded. What does that mean? It just means have your traveling clothes on. Get ready. Because once you're done with this meal, you're out of here. Be ready. Now, students, another question. Um, who were slaves in Egypt? Do you remember? Who were the slaves in Egypt? Yes. 
And it's okay if you ask mom and dad. You can always phone a friend here. Yes, the Jews, the Hebrews, they were called then. Same group of people, exactly right. So can a slave free themselves? No. Who, was, who did God send to set them free? Yep, yep, Moses, you, that's what you were going to say? Totally, that's totally what you were going to say. Now here's a question. How are we slaves? Do you remember that? We talked about that we are slaves, and we said it today, hint, hint, adults. If I start to say it, I bet you'll all finish it with me. We confess that we are in bondage to and we cannot free ourselves. Bondage is another way of saying sin, right? We are bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. So who sets us free? I heard it whispered. Jesus, exactly. That lamb who was slain, we'll sing it tonight, Jesus Christ, the lamb of God. All the times we sing about Jesus being a lamb of God, this is what it's talking about. This meal is God's way of proclaiming the totality of his love. That in this meal we receive Jesus' unconditional promise of love and life and forgiveness. Period. You don't have to do right stuff. You don't have to say the right words. You don't have to anything because you can't. We cannot free ourselves. Christ has done it all for you. Just as at that first Lord's Supper, some of the people coming forward tonight are faithful. They have this deep love of Jesus. And some of us coming tonight are filled with doubts. Some will continue to follow Jesus after tonight's worship, and some, you know, tonight was fine, but thanks, I'm done. Some here are seeking wholeness and healing, while others aren't exactly sure why they're here. Hear me, church. It's okay. Whatever brings you here tonight, however you are seated here tonight, God loves you. This meal is for you. And as the students learned, that's how we really know we're ready. Not because we understand any of this stuff. It's called faith, which means we don't intellectually grasp it. But we're ready when we truly believe that this is for us. Whatever brings you here tonight, this meal of love is for you. If you know this story, you know that one of these 12s will remain with him, that not one of these 12, I'm sorry, will be with him after he's arrested. We've said it already. Peter's going to deny him 30 times. Judas has already been paid for his denial. And yet, knowing this, he says these words. Drink from this cup, all of you. This cup is the new covenant, the new promise in my blood. Shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. So what is this new covenant? It's love, it's life, it's forgiveness. No amount of brokenness or betrayal will stop God, the creator of the universe, from loving you, church, and all people. So you've been given this amazing gift of radical love with only one goal in mind, that you go out into the world to share that radical love with everyone you meet. Say it with me. No exceptions. May it be so. Amen. We stand to sing hymn number 487.
holiest of days, we offer prayers for ourselves, for our neighbors, and for the world. We pray for the church around the world, O God. Write your new commandment of love on the heart of every believer. Strengthen pastors, deacons, and all lay leaders in the humble servants for your people. God, in your mercy. We pray for leaders in every land. Kindle, compa kindle compassion and equity in all who are called to administer justice. Guide all in positions of power away from the temptations of abuse and toward work for the common good. We lift up especially the people in Ukraine and the leaders of the United Nations. God, in your mercy. We pray for all who are in need, especially those who are incarcerated or unjustly accused. Illuminate paths to end oppression and form supportive communities gathered around a common commitment to justice and peace. God, in your mercy. We pray for this congregation and all who gather to receive your body and blood in person and online. Fill us at this shared table and nourish us well to heed your example of grace. Send us in love to those who cannot be with us due to illness. Be with Hilder, Marilyn and Jeff, Marge, Chris, Pastor John, Matt, Janice, Leroy, Bob, Tina, Austin, David, Katie, and Sarah. God, in your mercy... We give thanks for those who have died in the faith, O God. Teach us by their example and comfort us as we mourn. Renew us in the promise of life together with you. God, in your mercy. We offer to you these petitions and those we carry in our hearts, trusting in your radical, abundant, and ever-present mercy. Amen. You may be seated. Because of your generosity, we are able to do church, to be church, to go out into the world either far away or close by. Uh, gifts from Lutheran World Relief are going to those in the Ukraine right now. Gifts uh, are from our congregation are feeding those in Dassel. Um, so your gifts supply ministry. You may leave your offering in the offering plate in the back of the sanctuary. You may also sign up to uh, give online or stop by the church office. We join together in prayer. Extravagant God, you have blessed us with the fullness of creation. Now we gather at your feast where you offer us the food that satisfies. Take and use what we offer here. Come among us and feed us with the body and blood of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. At this time, I want to invite our, our First Communion students and their parents and godparents. Come on up, students, parents, and godparents. Grandparents can come, too. So let's have the students stand right in the front, like on this step here. And then <clears throat> you can, families, just gather around your student, place your hands on their heads, their shoulders. We've got one more here. Let's squeeze on in. There we go. Come on over here, people who love Connor. And if you can't, <clears throat> and if you can't reach your student, then you put your hand, do you want Jasmine over here? Let's come right over here, Jazzy. We're good. Go ahead and put your hand on somebody else's shoulder so that you, by, we're all connected. And then those of you sitting out there, just reach your hand out, all right, as if, there you go. Today, this community of faith rejoices with the following people who join in sharing the meal of hope. Holy Communion. I won't call you Genevieve. I just did. Jenny Bernison. Jeannie. Jeannie. Sorry, dear. Lance Dahlman. Uh, 
Bodie Erickson, who's not here tonight, Jazzy Holker, Jasmine, Ashlyn Kittlebach, Cattlebake, say it for me. Coddlebox, thank you. Oh, I need a teacher. Clearly, you're signing up. Connor McEnthune, did I get that one right? Oh, see, I didn't. <laughs> Connor McEntune, thank you. And Grayson Vorwick. Oh, see, Vorwick. Okay, I messed them all up. Except for Jasmine. I got Lance Dolman right, that's good. So in this sacrament of holy baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. In the sacrament of holy communion, God unites us all in Jesus Christ and nourishes us for that mission. Living among God's faithful people, we are strengthened by God's word and this holy supper to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Let us welcome these new sisters and brothers in Christ to Holy Communion. Welcome to the Lord's table. We thank God for you. We pray that you will find joy and strength in this meal until we feast forever at God's heavenly banquet. Now before the applause, because I know it's coming, I would like the students to just turn around Family members, step back a little bit. I'm stuck. Come on in here, Ashlyn. And I've got <clears throat> the designated, where is she? There she is. You come forward. Say cheese. Connor, come on in. Now we can applaud. Woohoo! Thank you. You can have your seats. I totally tricked you. Take a seat. Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ whose suffering and death gave salvation to all. You gather your people around the tree of the cross, transforming death into life. And so we remember that on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and after giving them to all to drink, he said, this is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Holy God, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. You may be seated. The ushers will direct you forward, First Communion families. You will receive communion right in line with everyone else. Uh, our trays in the center will have empty cups for those who wish communion wine. 
Uh, there are also pre-filled cups with juice in the center. Come, for all is ready.
given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Please stand as you are able. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his peace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, on the night before you suffered, you showed your disciples the extent of your love. You gave them this meal of forgiveness and remembrance, and you promised them that you would drink it again with them in your Father's kingdom. As we have shared in this meal, show us your love in your words of invitation. Restore our joy in the forgiveness you have won by your death and resurrection, and give us hope in the promise you have given of a feast to come. In this bread and wine, live and rule in us, even as you live and rule with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. As the lights dim and we hear the words of Psalm 22. The acolytes and I will begin an ancient practice of stripping the altar. It is done as a remembrance of the humiliation that Jesus experienced on this night as the soldiers stripped from him every article of clothing and distributed among themselves as they beat him as he suffered. Hear the words of this ancient psalm. We leave whence the psalm is complete and the altar is empty, we leave in silence. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet, yet you are holy enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you, our ancestors trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm, and not human, scorned by others, and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. 
Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe at my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth. And since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls encircle me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a, a ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water. All of my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs are all around me. A company of evildoers encircles me. My hands and feet have shriveled. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, do not be far away. Oh, my help comes quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion, from the horns of the wild oxen, you have rescued me. I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. And proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it.